Hello, this is Matt Moser, a partner with Alchemy Solutions, and today we're continuing to show how NetCobol for Windows can call a .NET DLL, and today's example is covering how to call a COBOL .NET DLL, in particular NetCobol for .NET, and the method which everything goes through in order to make this happen is called COM Interop. Um, standing for component object model and if you like there is a tutorial that kind of covers the pieces of how the registration is done how what is called a type library is built um, which generates a .tlb file which shows you know your properties your data types and your functions um, to com so that when you make the call and you register your DLL com will know about it so that your net COBOL for Windows DLL can find it. So without continuing too much further, if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you go and look at that one. We will cover the topics, um, but it's important that you look at it. So um, real briefly, the function that we're going to try to call is into an object-oriented COBOL DLL, and I call it simply add them. Each one of the tutorials does something slightly different and uh, we have one number coming in, a second number, and a total of the first and the second. Nothing real fancy. And we compute them. Another function that we have is return time with format. And all that's going to do is take the time and put colons in between it and return that back. Now, just like our other functions, in order for um, them to be called, what we need to do is to come in here and we have to look at the properties and what we have to do also is then on the application tab we're going to look for the assembly information and make sure it's it's make assembly is com visible so that means it'll um, it'll be able to be seen through the com interop piece without that it won't work real well and then within the build tab We don't really have a whole bunch to do on there. Um, and then we can kind of move on a little bit and cover signing. Um, as we spoke in the prior tutorials, um, the signing piece allows for the DLL to be signed and that's needed in order to get a proper registration of this DLL. So as you remember um, under VB6 and there's some other prior languages that wrote ActiveX DLLs, you are able to register them, um, and this allows for a solid registration is required to do so. And the, as we'll show, the registration is done using a combination of TLB, EXP, the type live exporter, as well as the, um, the register assembly um, function, REGASM. So continuing on, um, in order to build this DLL, we're simply going to say build solution. And again, we covered this stuff on a prior tutorial. So take a look at that on how to put out the strong name key. And that's really all that we really had to do for that. Now we need to build out our type library. And I'm already located here and I'm in within the Visual Studio 2008 command prompt and again the prior tutorial covered that in some depth on how to get there and how to set your paths so um, let's register it or let's do our type live TLB EXP and it's called cbl.net OO DLL.DLL and I probably spelled it wrong, yes I did .NET OO DLL dot DLL. Okay, so it exported the um, the types out. The next thing is to register it. And again, we're going to register with code base, which means it'll keep the code base local um, to this folder, and it'll register it in the registry. When you go to the registry, if you look for this particular DLL, you'll find that a specified code base for this particular path. So regASM, and we're going to call it cbl.net 
OO object oriented DLL dot DLL and I want to say code base okay so now we are registered and our COBOL for Windows program should be able to call it I do want to make a note of something let's go back into our object oriented class that we have here for COBOL um, be careful with your data typing uh, pick S94, COM5, make sure that it's coming through correctly. You may want to play with that a little bit, and there is documentation on it. But um, so, for example, coming in to this particular DLL, it has to be class string. You can't have a linkage section in an object oriented COBOL program that's a pickaxe. So um, it's a common thing people run into, but just make sure that if you're going to pass strings across from your COBOL program, make sure um, the COBOL program itself underneath Net COBOL for Windows can be a pickaxe, but the receiving area has to be class string. So we're going to go over to our project here. Um, and again, it's COM. And our object reference to COM is this ActiveX DLL it has an object reference to COM. And what we're pointing to is the COBOL.NET OODLL in its particular class. Nothing fancy there. And we create the instance. And I kind of brought across the code of what's actually going to wind up happening. And you'll notice that it does add them and does the time with, return time with format. Both of those are going to execute and it's going to display the results upon the screen. So it invokes them and let's go ahead and compile and I need to get to the screen for that. There we go. And we'll do our build and we'll close this and then we'll execute and basically it all ran through. So that demonstrates that you can make the call, shows you the steps in order to do so, and uh, if you have any questions or concerns, you can always reach them at underscore Moser at mosersoft.com um, or the great folks at Alchemy Support. And then also, uh, lastly, the, again, this source uh, will be available up underneath mosersoft.com partner page and in the near future up underneath Alchemy. Take care, thanks, bye.